Welcome to section 3. In this section we'll take a tour of the machine learning classifier algorithms within Scikit-Learn including perceptron, logistic regression, support vector machines, kernel support vector machines, decision trees, random forests, and k-nearest neighbors. Now that we've built our own Perceptron and Adeline implementations, we're going to see what Scikit-Learn has to offer from the Perceptron class. So we're going to need NumPy as usual, and also Scikit-Learn and Matplotlib. And we're going to import the data set submodule and then we're going to import the train test split convenience function, and that's in the model selection submodule. Prior to scikit 0.18, as I've indicated here in the note, that was found in the cross validation submodule. Uh, there have been some consolidation efforts made, and so that's been moved to the model selection. Cross validation will still work for the time being. However, it will be deprecated in future versions if you try and import it from the cross-validation submodule. We also need the standard scalar class, sklearns perceptron implementation. We'll be using the accuracy score later on, and that's found in the metrics submodule. And again, we'll be using our plot decision regions function, so we need the listed color map. We need to specify the back end we're going to use, and that's matplotlib.pyplot. And we want to set the figure size again as well and set the graphing inline. And now we're ready to go. So now we'll load the iris data set directly from. SK Learn. And this is in the data set submodule. They've got a handy convenience function called load iris that'll take care of all of that. And then we want to separate the features and the targets just like we did prior when we downloaded it from the UCI machine learning repository. And the training features are held in iris.data and the target values are in iris.target. So we'll split those. And now we'll see our train test split function in action here. And we'll use this to create training and testing splits for both the feature set and the target value set. So let's specify, we'll use test size the test size keyword argument. We'll set that to 30% or 0 0.3. This takes an alternate keyword called train size and we could set that equal to 0 0.7 or 70% if we want instead. We'll set random state so we can make the splits reproducible. And here's the signature and the function in usage. So this returns us four things, and the first two correspond to the first feature set passed in, x, and the second two to the target set passed in. So we have x train, x test, y train, and y test. We pass in our data, pass in the keyword parameters, test size, and random state, and it generates splits for us. And when we were implementing our custom version of Perceptron and Adeline, we talked about how machine learning algorithms would benefit or could benefit from feature standardization. We have the ability with Scikit-Learn to do this using the standard scalar class, so we don't have to do it manually. So we'll, inst we'll create one of those instances now, SC equals standard scalar. And then we want to fit this to the training data only. And the reason we fit to the training data only is that during the training process, we don't have access to data that 
we'll ex encounter in the future. And since we've decided to split part of our training set off to act as that unseen data from the future, we don't want to introduce any of that information into the model. So we fit the standard scaler to the training set only, and we use it to apply the transformation to both the training set and the testing set. And we do this using the transform method of the standard scaler. So x underscore train underscore std equals sc dot transform x underscore train and then we use the same method on the test set. Another noteworthy point is that anytime we have target values that are strings such as in the UCI version of the IRIS data set we need to transform those into numbers prior to bringing them into scikit-learn. And one way we can do this is simply assigning an integer value to each of the classes. So we had three classes in the IRIS data set and we can assign them class 0, class 1, and class 2. And it's important to do this prior to splitting your data set. Reason being, you may have very rare values that don't show up in either the training set or the test set. And so therefore, if you only have two out of the possible three class values in your training set, then your numbering scheme will be thrown off. And the results that you get could be unexpected and will most certainly be wrong. In the data sets library of sklearn, they've already taken the liberty of converting any target values that are strings to numbers. We can verify that by printing the unique labels here. and We can see 0, 1, and 2 for the class labels. And then just as we did in our custom implementation of Perceptron, we're going to do some naive feature selection. We'll discuss more robust methods of feature selection, more scientific methods later on in the course. For now, we're just going to take the third and fourth feature, and those are located at index 2 and index 3. Because remember, pandas and numpy are zero indexed, and that's what we're accessing here. And with that, we're all set to begin modeling. So now that we've done some pre-processing on our data, we can go ahead and train a model using the scikit-learn implementation of Perceptron. So again, we'll specify the parameters. We'll do n iter equals 40, so 40 iterations. And eta 0 equals 0 0.1. And this is the same as our eta parameter from our implementation of Perceptron. So it's the learning rate. Then we create an instance in the same manner that we did with our Python version. So PPN equals Perceptron, and we pass the keyword arguments. And we fit the model in the same manner. So we'll do ppn.fit, and then we'll pass in our standardized training data. And the corresponding target data. And then we predict, again, this syntax looks familiar to you. We're going to store those in the y underscore pred variable. So ppn.predict. And then we can see how we did using the accuracy score. And again, this isn't a very robust metric to use, but it works for our purposes now. And later on, we'll talk about better scoring methods to use to judge classifier performance.
an accuracy score takes the target labels, the true labels, so y underscore test, and the predicted labels, y underscore predicted, and it returns a it returns a float, and we multiply by a hundred to make it more human readable. So now we want to improve our plot decision regions function. So we'll add some code at the end that will highlight the test samples for us. So we can go ahead and cut and paste what we had already for our function definition. And then we'll add a little note here that denotes new code. And note we've also added an additional parameter, so test underscore IDX. And the default value for that is none. So if that is set, then this portion of code will run and create the scatter plot with our test samples highlighted. And this will give us an idea of which test cases our algorithm was having trouble with when it came to predicting. And again, it's not exactly scientific, but it's just a good way to quickly visualize how our model's performing. We're using the same marker, little o, which is a circle. We're setting the size to 55, so this is essentially going to outline the test set. And we can go ahead and lock that in. And now we're ready to train a model again and get a sense of how it did when it came to the test samples. In order to do that, though, we need to recombine our data set. So remember, we use train test split to split it up into X train and X test, Y train and Y test. Well, now we're going to recombine them. And to do that for the multidimensional array of our feature set, we're going to use the NumPy dot vstack method. And for Y, we're going to use NP dot stack. And this will get both of these individual data sets combined back together in the original form. And now all that's left is just to plot the decision regions and pass in the appropriate data. So this should look familiar by now. And again, our classifier is PPN. And the test indices are going to be the last 45 samples. Because remember, we just took the test data for the feature set and the target set, and we just stuck them to the bottom of the training set. The syntax should be familiar by now. And there's our additional parameter, test IDX. And then we'll add some additional information in the form of labels and the legend, like we have been. And the two features we selected were the third and the fourth. And those are going to be pedal length and pedal width. And of course they're standardized because we use standard scalar on them. And 
and then we'll put a location of upper left for the legend and running this and we should have a nice plot And here we can see the red class, class 0, it had no problem classifying those correctly. The trouble spots were when it got to class 1 and class 2. As we can see, there's no clear line of demarcation between the two. They're kind of interspersed together.